we're back doing one of our very favorite things. This is great cars on an amazing road. We're here to confirm some things, dispel some myths, to talk about sports cars, performance cars as your only car. But you need that enthusiast car to do it all because you can only have one car in your life. It's got to carry people. It also has to carry a lot of gear. We hear a lot of commentary about how I can't have a sports car. I can't afford it. I can't use it. It's not going to work for my life. And so we're asking the question, is that true? Or have we all just become conditioned that a big SUV is what we need and we really don't? You're watching Everyday Driver. We make a TV show, podcast, and YouTube channels dedicated to great cars, driving adventures, and helping you find a car you'll love. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a thing. Now, these are two cars that we've driven before and we recommend them constantly to you guys looking for the all-rounder, but is still, with its intent, a driver's car first and foremost. We have the Toyota GT86, or the 86, depending upon where you are in the world. It used to be called the Scion FRS here in the States. We also have the Hyundai Veloster N, a car that has worked its way on our greatest hits recently because we love it. Two different platforms that can do it all. You can make these cars work. Both of these cars are named after two of the world's most famous driving roads. The Veloster N was developed at the Nürburgring, and the Hakone Edition 86 is named after the Hakone Turnpike, one of the world's best driving roads. It's famous in Japan. It's near Mount Fuji. It's still about 200 horsepower. This one's actually 205 now, 151 pound-feet of torque. It is not powerful, but it is rear-wheel drive, well-balanced, and lightweight. This Hakone Edition it is this green paint and these gold wheels and this fin on the back. None of the good dampers, none of the good brakes. It is just that appearance package. Unfortunately, that appearance package can't fix the front end, which still looks like some weird constipated emoji thing. The interior, you get some Alcantara, you get some stitching to touch, and tan stitching on the steering wheel. And volume controls, you get engine start stop button, the HVAC controls here. This one does cost $30,800. That puts it within $300 of the out the door price on that Veloster N. The seats. The lateral support is great. You first sit here and you think these seats are great. Except after about 90 minutes when your back starts to hurt because the middle of the seat is too soft. One of the other things that came out of the mid-cycle refresh on this car is this 4.2 inch TFT screen and they put it under two round gauges to kind of make it look like they changed both gauges. But it still is a sports car first. The money did go into how does it drive? Luckily, it drives very well. When I was growing up, I had a Hot Wheels. It was a strange bread van looking kind of car. But you know what? It looked a lot like the Veloster N. It was aggressive and crazy looking and asymmetrical. This really is a fantastic execution of the classic hot hatch recipe. It is a front wheel drive little screamer with a good amount of space in the back and a surprising amount of power from a little turbocharged engine. Put it with a good six speed manual, put a limited slip differential in the front. You have a little bit of a surprise car. It's going to sneak up on people that are going to be like, why is that so quick? The exterior is purposeful, mean, it sits low and squatty. Look at it from the rear. Those fenders flare out and they're accentuated by both scallops in the front and rear. Two doors on the right side, only one door on the driver's side. This Veloster N at $30,500 is kind of an explosion of technology. You do have full Apple CarPlay in here, but the more important thing is the subscreens in this car. You can customize anything. So few sports cars at any price point will allow you this level of customization. Hyundai is treating their interior surface breakup differently. They've got a lot of different materials and shapes, but everything relates to the exterior of the car. It seems like it's very specific to the aggressiveness of what the Veloster N represents. Yes, there are hard plastic in places you're not going to touch. That's where the $30,000 comes in here. I mean, these door panels and things are not very nice. But the amount of technology here, the customization, this feels like a modern, digitally assisted car. 
and they couldn't be more different. This is rear wheel drive. The Veloster N is front wheel drive. Everyday Driver is brought to you by Haggerty Drive Share, connecting people to cars they actually want to drive. In the world of Hellcats and Model S's and crazy horsepower in your random hatchback because it has a turbocharger, this Toyota 86 seems like it should have more. In fact, it should have a little more, but this is a classic sports car where it's about the rear wheel drive and the great dynamics. That's what you're buying here. Since the beginning of driving this car, I've wanted more power. Right there, coming out of the corner, right there. I feel the cam change and it's still just more noise. It's not a shove in the back. And if you want to keep these cars right together in terms of price, $300 apart, well, this is what we're stuck with. The issue is the torque dip. It's been with this car since it was first launched and you can easily tune it out. So I'm still baffled that Toyota and Subaru are selling this car with its current tuning. What happens is between about 3,000 and 5,000 RPM, suddenly the engine just feels like it's being held back. It creates such a sensation of what's wrong with the car? Why isn't it better than this? And I'm shifting. Luckily, if you go all the way to Redline, you drop in above the torque dip, which is great. But how often are you going to be between three and 5,000? I'll tell you, a lot. It's one of the big reasons that holds me back from really wanting an 86. Power alone. The rest of the car, though, is brilliant. For commuting it daily, you're not gonna feel like, hey, I need a whole lot more power, you're commuting. This gearbox, honestly, is one of the best gearboxes being sold right now. If you're a person that likes a manual transmission, you need to drive this car. I'm gonna just pass you because I can. Aha, <laughs> bye-bye. I love power. I love it when a car gives me the torque out of a corner, and that's what the turbocharger on the Veloster N does. 275 horsepower, 260 torques. I'm not even in end mode yet. In mode for Nürburgring, now it's more and angrier. The other cool feature that the Veloster N gives you is rev match. I love practicing heel and towing myself, but I have to admit, when the car does it for you and it makes your corner even faster, there's a big case to be made for it. It's excellent. The other reason you need the assist when you're shifting, the pedals are too far apart. That's why Hyundai added this feature, but again, it's a compromise. This is a classic rear-wheel drive, lightweight sports car that does everything it's supposed to when you give it an input. There's no surprises here. This is honestly one of the most docile sports car platforms I've ever driven. I'm sure you've heard that this car, oh, it's a drift machine. It's designed to get the back out. It will easily get the back out. It will also easily understeer. This is a car incredibly affected by tires. The tires they put on this originally are these, unfortunately, primacy tires from Michelin. They really let this chassis down. But here's where the car shines. You can really manage its weight through the corners. Keep your speed consistent and you can just get this back and forth, back and forth. Love that about rear wheel drive, and I love feeling out of a corner that rear wheel drive push. When you jump in the Veloster in after the 86, you're instantly aware of how much a front wheel drive car corrupts steering. There's nothing you can do. Having everything happen in the front of the car just complicates the steering so much that it's really hard to get any kind of delicate feel that the 86 thrives at. The front of the car feels heavy at first, but then you realize suddenly this has a quicker steering ratio than the 86. The steering rack on the Veloster N is a 12 to 1. That's one of the fastest steering ratios being sold right now on cars in any part of the market. 
That combined with the front wheel drive output means it really dives into a corner. You can feel the weight over the front wheels, but it's absolutely overcome by the quick steering rack. It is truly corrupted by being front wheel drive, even though this is a fantastically quick dive for a corner front wheel drive. This is how a hot hatch should be in the modern time. Great technology, fantastic customization. Start with the drive mode on the left button on your steering wheel here. You can cycle through eco and normal and sport. But as soon as you touch the checkered flag, this is your customization button. So whatever you've customized here can be instantly fired with the right button at your right thumb. It turns everything off and suddenly it's time to get after it. <laughs> But what if you're just commuting in this car? What if you don't need this N mode all the time? It's nice to know that it's there. It's nice to know that you can customize all these things and know in your heart that Hyundai has sorted this on the ring and therefore it is a track car. It is a Canyon car. This E-differential does a really good job of sorting out the plague of a front wheel drive hot hatch, which is torque steer. Floor it on a straight. You can feel the car sorting it. It kind of salmons its way up the road a little bit, but it never fights you with the wheel. At the same time, though, when you drive this car, you realize you're the caboose of the situation. You are the least important, last in line element of everything that's happening with this car. It's all in front of you. The rotation feel, the power band, the steering, all the good braking. You're back here practically hanging off the back like a flag. Everyday Driver is brought to you by Covercraft. Use the code EVERYDAY for 10% off your order. Yes, the SUV will swallow everything you can bring. But do you need all that stuff? What if you pared it back, just the minimum, and you still took your sports car? So when you're going camping and you find a road like this, you think, oh, this is nice. But let's talk about usability. Todd used to own an 86. He proved to the world that you can drive it all winter. The trunk is decent, and you can also fold the rear seats down, which means you can put a fair amount of gear back there. Again, we're talking about a small car, but that's the trade-off. Now it's even more towards a driver's car, and it gives you just a little bit less space. If I think about the reasons why people don't buy sports cars, well, I can't fit anything in it. You can in this. I can't do more than two people. You can do that in this too. I can't afford a sports car, but whatever you bought new probably cost about what this did. This is the first great affordable rear wheel drive platform to come out in a long time, but it is far more usable than that Miata that we love. This car's working hard on me. As a compelling case, as an all arounder, Veloster N cannot be ignored. For the money, this car will kill a lot of other cars. The fact that they tuned it on the Nürburgring and you can still fit all your luggage, your gear, everything back here, this is a compelling car. Put the right winter tires on it, you can drive it in the winter too. There's really very little in a modern life that this car can't do. You want to have it cost around $30,000, the average for what a car costs in this country. $30,500. You'd like to haul two kids in the back seat. Yep, we can do that. You do only have one door, but we'll sort that out. You'd like to put some things in the hatch while you haul the kids. You can do that as well. It is a usable hatchback shape in spite of the funky three doors. And then it's a hoon machine. And when you fold those two rear seats down, you can take a lot of gear. The Veloster N, just the Veloster alone, swallows a lot of gear. This is kind of the best of both worlds in that sense. You've got all your gear you need, and it's just big enough, and you can still enjoy a road like this. You've got power, it's track tuned. You've got customization, and the seating position and the seats, even though it's a little bit higher, the seats are dramatically better than the 86. 
I can't believe how close the 86 gets to having everything I love and still be usable. This is still more usable. This is still a better performance car for more people because it has, frankly, more space for more people and it just has a little bit more of a commute-friendly mid-range power band. So ultimately, either of these cars comes down to the driving dynamics that you love. And I admit to you, because of the platform, I would choose this. I would take a little bit less usability to get this feeling than the Veloster, although it's tight, it's tight for me. This will do whatever you'd like. If you'd like to cruise and drive it very softly and quietly and not push at all, it's fine doing that. It never feels like it's hyper aggressive and frustrated with you, but if you want to drive it really hard, it's ready. This takes your inputs and does exactly what a car should do in response. Never gives you more, never gives you less. That means you can drive it badly and not have a good experience. It also means you can drive it well and have an incredible amount of fun. If you cane it, it has enough power. Most people aren't going to drive that way, though. The Veloster N is the car designed by Hot Wheels. And people look longingly at this car. You're at a rest stop people come up to this car and they think, well, that looks like fun. Yep, and it's usable and it checks every single box. It's no SUV that swallows all of your gear, it isn't. But there isn't an SUV that drives like this. Of course, there's power. You're seeing it. The exhaust might annoy you. The seats should be a little better. A lot of car for the money, though. I've never been more undecided. It's like going <laughs> to your favorite restaurant and the two favorite meals that you love, you could go either way. I'm so undecided on these That's cars. amazing. I don't know that you've ever been quite that undecided. Here's the thing you do have to know. These are great cars. We've recommended them a lot. We've recommended them to you a lot. I used to own one of them, and the other one is owned by a person that listens to the show and bought it because we say how much we like it. It's clear we love these. The thing I like about this is to talk about them as you can afford it, you can use it as your only car. You've just watched us cram a whole bunch of gear into the back of both cars. Yeah. The same gear. Yeah, yeah and they're great. The back seats are not made equal, which I acknowledge. The 86 is not a four seat <laughs> it's car. Not, it's, it's not, it's not. really not. But then I come down to the driving experience. Having proven that you can drive these as your only yep. cars, I yep. come back to the driving experience because that is first and foremost. And so I think, well, I love the torque out of the corner when you hit the turbo and it pulls you right out and it's really great. I love the power. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I love the rear wheel drive, light feel of this car. You're completely conflicted. I'm back and forth. I cannot believe it. That's crazy. Look, I have to say that the 86 is the car for me. Every time I drive it, I just think, yeah, there's a reason I own this. I still love it. It's still the one I prefer, but there's nothing to take away from the Veloster. I think the Veloster in may be the best hot hatch being made right now. All weather, you could go winter, winter tires. Could. You could just drive in the snow. I drove my 86 yeah. in the snow. Yeah, you did. Just do whatever you need in your life $30,000, you can own an actual performance car. It's very old school in a sense. Even though it's not an old car, it's very old school in the way you interact with it, which is wonderful. And I think ultimately that's the slight edge that I'll give it. It is an analog experience in a very digital world. In spite of the fact that it has electric power steering, there's a, quite a bit of information here. It has just a simple six-speed, properly spaced pedals, really good driver position. Go out, enjoy a sports car. And you can use it. 30 miles to the gallon, good usable space. Bring it. You have more value, you get more settings, you have more power. You're only 300 pounds heavier for $300 more, and you get genuine back seats and a whole lot more cargo space. This is the better buy across the board. Honestly, there isn't an SUV made that I would rather drive than this. 
this is that good. I, I love it. It's one of the greatest hits cars for us right now on the podcast. When we talk about people looking for a do-it-all, the Veloster N rises to the top very quickly. I'm changing my mind again. I reserve the right to change my mind because right there, up the hill, I want power. I need power. I guess that's what the 86, oh, did you feel it? No, okay, I'm back, right there, that was good. All right, I'm back, it's, it's the 86 again. This is tough.